I've always loved to dress up for Halloween, although I'll admit I've never known much about the history of the holiday. T, what about you? Like, are you, are you a Halloween fan? Mm, <laughs> not into the costumes, never have been. I was into the trick-or-treating, though. Yes. When I was a kid, I really loved the trick-or-treating. I got excited about that. But I was that kid who just wore the mask yeah. and my street clothes. So you're the lame person with the cat ears <laughs> and maybe a whisker? And maybe a whisker or a clown face <laughs> and then just street clothes. Yeah, I was never into it. I always felt a little silly doing it. Got it, but you didn't feel silly getting the Sweet Marie chocolate bar. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> okay, thanks, T. Well, it turns out it's not just about candy and trick-or-treating. And Lorraine is here to tell us about how it all began in Ireland. Lorraine, come on in here and have Hi. a seat. You had such a good time oh, in Ireland. It was so nice. We really did. And we were there to figure out the history of Halloween. And, of course, it really dates back 2,000 years or more wow. from the Celtic people yes. who were very, very superstitious. So the Celts believed that at the end of summer, Samhain, yeah. which was summer's end, they believed that that was the closest gap between the living world mm -hmm. and the spirit world. Okay. And they were afraid that the spirits would re-enter and cause trouble. So they would dress up in costumes and off they would go um, down the streets and parade and similar to what we do now, but yeah, that's, that's how that began. Now there is also a theory about the jack-o'-lanterns. Mm -hmm. It was actually a blacksmith who decided he was going to carve a turnip. A turnip? A turnip, yes. Okay, that's not, that not exactly have. a pumpkin. Like, are there no. any tips for carving a turnip? Yes, don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you will maybe lose a couple of fingers, Tracy, so <laughs> you're probably better off sticking to pumpkins. So the origin is you dress up in costumes because you want to make sure the spirits stay in spirit world and they don't get us here. But I'm wondering, are there um, similarities between the way they celebrate Halloween in Ireland and the way we would celebrate here in North America? I think there are, and they've also evolved. You know, all the traditions are still very much deep-rooted in Ireland, and they have evolved, and it has become a little bit more of what we would know as Halloween here, but they're big on festivals. In fact, the whole of Ireland is big on festivals. Mm -hmm. So at this time of year, up north, just north of Dublin, actually, by Trim Castle, they have this big, massive festival every year at Halloween. And they even bring in famous bands. And then they project images on the front of the castle. They dress up in costumes and, and all of that. And it's the same kind of tradition. But after that, while we were there, we decided to hot foot it around Ireland and have a look for some other spooky stories. And then we went to Ashford Castle. You can't go to Ireland without going to Ashford Castle. And we found out that a little girl actually is haunting some of the bedrooms <gasps> in Ashford Castle. <laughs> yes. So it ha hasn't been seen for many, many years. And then also we decided to go across a little bit further and see some more stories. And then there's one in Kilkenny where a woman owned a pub mm -hmm. in the 1300s, well above her time, you know, well ahead of her time. Yeah. And she owned this pub, and so, because they were a bit afraid of her, so they, um, they tried her as a witch. And she was convicted, but she escaped. Yeah. And now it's believed that she haunts the pub from the 1300s, yeah. She should haunt them. Yeah. Come on, she's just a woman that is ahead of her time yeah, doing her exactly. thing and they're so threatened that they gotta try her as a witch. We'd all be witches up in here we would if that were the case, the right? Stage. All Absolutely of us. Absolutely right. Okay, so I hear Ireland and I think about kissing the Blarney Stone, which I feel like there could not be an activity that is more <laughs> not in times with the pandemic <laughs> than kissing <laughs> a Blarney Stone. So yeah. is this still happening right it now? It does, yeah, and I was very surprised. So, <laughs> okay. yeah, so, so Keith was with me and and I made Keith climb six stories up to the top of the castle. And you can still kiss the Blarney Stone, but it's gone from the germiest attraction mm. in the world to the cleanest attraction because now what they do is they um, spray it every time. So it is actually the cleanest attraction. But it's okay. still scary because you still have to bend right backwards Oof. and, you know, and, and do that. But uh, it, it, it's doable right now. But imagine a world where we would all kiss the same Blarney Stone. People used to line up for hours to do that, Tracy. Can you imagine? We would never no. do that today, would we? No. Ooh. I don't know if I would do that in pre-pandemic times, but I'm just wondering, is it supposed to give you a lot, a lot of luck? Uh, it's supposed to make you very eloquent. Oh, it yes. makes you speak mm -hmm. better. Yes, okay. it didn't work for Keith, but when... <laughs>
teeth. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't watch this episode. I love that. Okay, ghosts and castles. You've talked about that a little bit. Um, what other stories did you hear about while you were there? Oh, my God. So many things. I went to Glasnevin Cemetery. Mm -hmm. There's 1.6 million people buried there, Tracy. That's a lot of ghost stories right there. That's a lot, That's a lot, of, lot of people. a lot of people to find out how they died and what kind of stories we have for them. So, yeah, a lot of, a lot of ghost stories there. And, and we just had a really great time. It's a great time of year to visit Ireland. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. It was safe. And I just... Oh, I just loved it. It was so good for me. You were smitten immediately, and oh, you came nice. back and you put it at the top of your list in terms of countries to, to travel to. Uh, yeah. um, COVID safety, obviously, priority number one always, and you always. found that all around Ireland, didn't yeah, you? we did. We certainly did. I mean, there's a lot of open spaces for mm -hmm. a start, you know. You do need to um, have a full vaccination of the same dose mm. to go there mm -hmm. that's number one number two you fill out a form a plf form it's there it's online it's easy to get on the ireland website mm -hmm. um obviously you know as i say fully vaccinated means you can get into restaurants and you can do all of those things um and then lastly there are direct flights and they're covid safe flights and of course you know that the people sitting next to you are fully vaccinated also right. so so that's a very good thing as well and um it, it was a it was a really great time. Now all attractions are open at the moment, okay. and it just felt wonderful. Open air spaces and and open top buses and things like that. It was a really really fantastic way to travel. Great time of year to travel to. Well, thank you for telling us a little bit about the uh, the beginning of Halloween and the trip. Sound amazing, yes, hauntingly.